All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Evans Garage. Uh, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to wire up a split fuse block. Now this this split fuse block is made by Blue Sea Systems. Blue Sea Systems are marine electrical uh, for 12 volt is what I'm gonna be using it for. And uh, they make some really good products. They're very durable, uh, very waterproof. They're you know built to stand up in a marine environment. So that's why I'm using them. Uh, what I'm gonna be doing like I said, is installing a switched bank of six constant fuses as well as switched uh, fuses. So that way, you know, there's certain things that I want to be able to run all the time uh, on a constant circuit, or there's certain devices that require a constant circuit as well as a switch circuit. This is a nice consolidated fuse block that will allow me to easily wire up um, in the future some circuits that require either or. And in the meantime, I'm going to be using it to wire up my gauges, um, as well as a CB radio I'm putting in the truck, and a couple other small circuits. And then it really future-proofs the system, um, so that's why I'm gonna be installing that. I'll link everything that I use in the description box of the video, as well as my uh, planned circuit diagram. Uh, there's just a quick shot of it, but I'll snip it and put it on the screen for you so you can see my whole wiring setup, as well as all the wiring sizes. Uh, for the most part, these are the big things that you're gonna need here. Uh, your fuse block, a bus bar, a circuit breaker, a heavy duty constant uh, continuous duty solenoid, as well as some heavy gauge wire uh, to wire uh, some of the initial wirings. And then uh, it's good to have, I've got some 16, I think it's 16 gauge, um, all marine grade. Okay, so I've got 10 and 14, 14 aug. So I'll use 14 aug for the smaller uh, circuits and then 10 aug for the for the higher current drawing circuits, but um, all marine grade, uh, it's, I believe it's uh, tinned copper. So it's built to stand up in a marine environment. Uh, I figure anything that's good enough to go in a marine environment is definitely good enough to go in my truck. So I'll show you how I'm gonna wire this up and where I'm gonna wire it and walk you through that entire process. All right, so I've come in um, to the driver's side of the engine bay and I've removed, there's a couple of relays that were here um, as well as this horn for now. And I'm gonna find a good way to arrange my uh, systems here. So I need to go from the battery, from the battery positive over to the circuit breaker. And then I'm gonna go circuit breaker to my positive bus bar. And then this will allow me to disconnect everything from, uh, disconnect everything with the push of my circuit breaker. And then I'll go from my positive bus bar over to my split fuse block. And then I'll run a wire over to my solenoid so that way I have uh, switch power for one bank of the fuse block. So I found a good way to arrange these so I'll mount them all to the inner fender there and show you how it's all mounted. Okay so I've mounted the fuse block, the bus bar, the circuit breaker, and the solenoid. Um, I think everything's in a good enough spot that I can probably get all my wires routed nicely. Um, so this circuit breaker is an 80 amp circuit breaker. Um, I might need to increase the size of that because I'm planning to have my grid heaters wired to here and I want to have the entire truck run through the circuit breaker so that way it's easy to you know, flip off uh, when I need to work on something. This bus bar is rated for 150 amps. Um, this circuit breaker in total is rated for 100 amps and then that uh, solenoid is rated at 80 amps. Now ideally if I had my clamp meter I'd be able to test the entire system. Um, I'm a little worried about the grid heaters drawing too much amperage and killing the circuit breaker, so I might need to wire those direct to the battery um, or get a bigger circuit breaker. But the wiring that I'm using um, is 4 AUG and uh, rated up to 100 amps. So um, I'm gonna, if I need to, I'll, I'll get a 100 amp circuit breaker here, see if it uh, trips when I'm using my grid heaters. Otherwise, uh, the entire truck's going to be wired through the circuit breaker. The factory wiring is going to be wired on the bus bar, and then my auxiliary uh, circuits are going to be wired into there. I used number 14 screws. Um, I think they were an inch long or three quarters of an inch long uh, for this guy, and then the solenoid. And I used a factory hole on the left hand side of that, and then drilled a new one for there. And then I used number eight screws. Uh, two on the bus bar, four on the fuse block that were all three quarters of an inch long and all, all stainless hardware to make sure that nothing rusts. All right, at this point, I'm gonna wire um, my 
factory wiring that was on the positive terminal over to this bus bar that I just installed as a part of my fuse box setup. So my, the two wires on the left to my grid heaters, the pink wire to my hazards, and then uh, the far wire on the right to my fusible links. You're all gonna get wired right to this bus bar. That's what I've got so far. Okay, and now that I've got the factory wires mounted to the bus bar, I wanna work on wiring um, from the battery to the circuit breaker, and then the circuit breaker to the bus bar. Spent most of the afternoon yesterday working on the wiring. So my battery terminals are completely installed. I've got my four aug wire running over to my 80 amp circuit breaker. Uh, I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to change this out to a 100 amp circuit breaker. And then for my circuit breaker, wired over to the bottom of this bus bar, I've got my factory uh, wiring that was on the positive terminal of the battery on this bus bar. So my two grid heaters, and then to my hazard flashers, and then this one down here to my fusible links. Another wire going over to the bottom bank of this fuse block. That's going to be my six co constant circuits. And then from the bottom of this uh, fuse block, I run it over to the far side of this solenoid. And then I haven't hooked up my solenoid activation wire and ground yet, but on the other side of the solenoid, it runs up to my other bank of six. And then I've wired my ground. I didn't have uh, black four aug just because it was expensive for a roll. So I just covered it in uh, automotive wire wrap to make it black. I ran it down and then underneath the factory uh, wire loom there and then just right next to the hood pull cable all the way up right to the negative terminal of the battery. So just a quick note on how I do all my wire ends. So for the smaller ones I've been using the marine grade uh, connectors that have heat shrink built in and then I add marine grade red if it's a positive and then black uh, heat shrink if it's a negative so all my grounds coming off of here I'm gonna have black heat shrink and then all my positives I'll have red heat shrink to easily identify them and use red wire for hot and then black for ground and then the bigger lugs uh, I have an assortment of lugs that I use depending on the terminal size like the terminal that it mounts on as well as the wire size so I use four aug lugs and then the hole in the end of the terminal uh, changes depending on uh, what I'm mounting it to so it's good to have a variety of uh, lugs at your disposal when you're doing this project. Okay so the next thing I'm going to work on is uh, finish wiring the solenoid one of these sides, doesn't matter which, I'll probably make it this one, is gonna go up to ground, and then the other one, I'm gonna run back into the cab and do a fuse tap on the cab circuit block and tap into a circuit that is uh, switched power, so power only goes to it when the key is on. Okay, and to power the solenoid, I'm just using a fuse tap with a three amp fuse. Um, that's the lowest I've got. Uh, ideally, I'd use a one or two amp fuse. And then in the fuse box, um, right where my gauges were actually powered, the switch power source is the cigar lighter. And then uh, I'll wire into my new fuse box uh, my gauges for the constant, where on number 15 there. That's where my constant power was for the gauges. Okay, so I've got my solenoid all wired up. The power wire just going through the hole for the um, clutch, clutch master cylinder if you had a manual truck. And then my ground going up to here. I've already wired in my gauges, uh, the positive for constant and hot as well as the ground. Or sorry, for constant switch as well as the ground. And we'll take my test light now and I'll show you. I've got power here. Without my breaker on, I don't have power at my bus bar. Turn my breaker on. I've got power at my bus bar. I have power down at my constant bank of switches. Sorry, there we go. My constant bank of switches. And then I don't have power 
at my uh, switched bank of circuits. I've got power to this side of the solenoid. Don't have power to this side of the solenoid until I turn my key on. So I'll go turn my key on. I should have power here as well as here. All right, uh, my key is in the accessory position. So I should have power to this side of the relay, which I do, to this side of the activation of the solenoid, and then up here at my switch fuse bank. And then I'll still have constant power over here. And then if I trip my circuit breaker off, everything should shut off. There we go, back on. There we go. Okay, and so next I'm gonna be working on uh, cleaning up the trailer brake wiring a little bit. These two pieces right here are automotive circuit breakers. Um, one of them I think goes right back to the uh, input for the uh, trailer harness and then one goes to your controller. Um, one of these is supposed to have uh, constant and then one is supposed to have switch power. That's why someone put this solenoid in. So I'm going to take this solenoid out, uh, wire this guy to switch power, this guy to constant power, and then uh, redo all these in marine grade terminals. All right, and here's the cleaned up wiring. Um, the reason I'm keeping these circuit breakers instead of making them fuses is uh, the install for the brake controllers uh, typically should have these uh, auto reset circuit breakers instead of fuses uh, as a safety feature. So that's why I'm keeping them there. Um, not really too happy with the location that previous owner mounted them. Um, it would have been nice if they were tucked up a bit more this way or maybe even on the firewall here but uh, if I rewire the brake controller one day I will I will uh, put them somewhere else a little bit cleaner so you can see the wiring for my auto reset uh, breakers there comes up to my solenoid so I have constant on one side and then switched on the other and then I just run it down uh, beneath the grid heaters and then up to those reset uh, circuit breakers there. All right, now that I've rewired those uh, trailer brake controller wires, I'm gonna find a good place for these relays. Um, ideally, I don't wanna mount them upside down so water ingresses into the wire. Um, it'd be nice if I can mount them upright here somewhere. So I'll find a good spot and show you where I put them. All right, now although they're mounted uh, slightly upside down, um, I couldn't find a really a better spot to mount them. So I just used the old uh, holes from the solenoid. So instead of drilling a couple new holes up here, I just use these ex existing ones and then that way there's not too much strain on the wires. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, mostly finished product. Um, minus I've got to do a bit of trimming to make that fuse block cover fit because of those four aug wires. Um, I've got my gauges installed to that fuse block. I'm going to install my CB on there next, but uh, this is pretty much mostly wraps up the battery terminal project as well as my fuse block project. So running through the system here again, power going to my circuit breaker, circuit breaker to my bus bar, bus bar to my constant bank of fuses, the constant bank of fuses to my solenoid, and then the solenoid to my switched power. All right, and so I just had to trim a little bit uh, of the edge there, as well as on the bottom edge there, just because those four aug wires are uh, just a just a bit too big um, to fit with the cover on perfectly. So after trimming that up, I guess we can consider this uh, install complete. Okay, and now I'm going to do a final test here and make sure that my electrical systems work and that this circuit breaker doesn't trip when the grid heaters go on. So so keep an eye down here, and if uh, this breaker trips. After I cycle the grid heaters, then chances are I'm going to need to get the 100 amp circuit breaker. So I, I'm going to cycle them once um, and see if they go off. If they don't go off or if the circuit doesn't trip, I'll cycle the grid heaters twice and see what that does. So we'll flip that on. So I cycled the grid heaters twice there, and that just popped. So, um, so it works when you cycle it once, but um, looks like two times is a bit too much. 
those wires aren't they're not warm so that's good uh, and the grid heaters are a bit warm there all right uh, so that wraps up this install guys um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go to the store and either get a hundred amp or, or a hundred twenty amp I might get a hundred and twenty amp just to make sure that those grid heaters are getting getting enough juice to them um, without that tripping and that'll, that wraps up this install so uh, thanks for watching I really appreciate it and up next I'm going to be installing my CB radio into this truck and I'll show you how to do that. Cheers.